When using fast scat, everything that you put into the scat itself will be referred to as a tile. So on the left hand side, you'll see tiles and then a range of options. So if I click spacer, text or image, those three things will automatically import the tile to the scout. Section header is a tile. When I select that, we'll have some options before I can enter the tile itself. So by default, these will all be black, but I've used that, the admin portal to go in and set up my account with our team colors being blue and yellow. Background color and text color, or I can swap that around, half width, full width for the entire tile or text with different options that you know you can see through here, different sizes, you know, as big or small as you like, and bold, italicized, whatever you would like. Add tile, and it adds to the bottom. Now, each of these three tile, four tiles, you'll see every time I hover over, there's this black ribbon, and it changes my cursor from either a text, pointer, whatever I'm on, to these four arrows, which allows me to move anything around and just reorganize it all. So click and drag, you'll see the shadow behind where it's trying to go. And as soon as I release it, it will drop that there. So there's a little bit of room here. So you have options with how you set that up. Now by default, everything's trying to shift its way to the top. So you have to kind of make sure that you work your way top down. So if this section header is going to be at the top, simply drag that to the top. I might want the text block on the left and then the image on the right, I can do so that way. Now you see all four of these tiles have this little angle in the corner. Click, drag, and release to resize. Now, to explain the section header, obviously it's just a header for that section. So I might want to put name day details. And then that all this area here is game day details. Now, when you, I hover over anything and this black ribbon appears, you'll see the three dot menu. I can select that, click settings, and it will take me back into here where I can flip some things around. Might not like that, I might want to get Arial black, maybe just plain Arial, make it a little bit larger, whatever I'd like. Hit save and it adjusts. I can move it to another page. So if I have a second page here, I can move to other page two. By default, it will put it to the lowest part, the lowest spot available. If I move it back to page one, it's going to put it to the bottom. I can duplicate the tile, make another one exactly the same as I see it right now. I can save it or delete it. Deleting it will remove it and saving it will put it into this section here where you'll see I've already put something in. Now, with the text block and image, we'll have some other options that aren't available to the section header. Again, I can resize these, same as everything else. I might want to make these a bit smaller. Resize and then put another spacer in. So before I go into the text block in the image, I'll just explain that the spacer, because it says it doesn't print, but it really doesn't do anything except it allows you to give your scout a bit more presentation purpose. So now if I do print this, this is just going to be a blank white space, as will this section here. It doesn't come up on the app. It obviously doesn't print, but it just gives your layout a bit more Preference to how you'd like it to look. Now with the text block, again, I have the option here of move tile to another page, duplicate, save or delete, same as section header. But we also have the option to hide a header, which is this part here. And if I go back, display the header again. Another option I have is the tile formatting, which the header size I can make larger, smaller. I can change the color of the header and the header background. Also adaptive line height, which is this information here, can vary. Now, to get rid of that menu, I just click that button again, and I can add video, or I can click this button here, which will do the same thing and allow me to add video. Hit add video from computer, select a file you want to add, and it will start to upload. Now, often you'll add the video to tiles of relevance, so normally offensive keys and defensive keys, and you'll add an offensive or defensive focus video. But as an example, we'll just say video title details and then notes appear here. And that's just so when we go to the mobile app, you'll see how they appear. From the web browser, you'll see you can download, play it with playback speed at different speeds, full screen and change audio settings. 
hit the save tile, and now you'll see there's a one in brackets. If I add more, you'll see more there. Now we might just say details, and then that's a header for this section here, this tile here. Now in the text section, we can just type text as usual. We can use some bullet points. We can indent. We can use numbers or numbered sections. Sorry, I've gone too fast. Numbered, and again, I can indent them as well. General font options, and we can choose different colors. So most of your font options that you'll have in any real text editor, you'll be able to play around with that here. Undo if you're not happy with anything, redo if you want to go back. With an image, everything works essentially the same way. All the options are the same. So we can upload an image by clicking there and then uploading a photo. To get rid of that menu, simply click the three dots again. Now, another thing you'll have options to add will be the custom table. If you click custom table, similar to the section header, you have some options you have to select before you can progress. So you have include column or row headers. You'll see a bit of a preview down here. And then I can move my mouse and you'll see down the bottom here, how many cells. And then in the last cell, it'll have a plus. So once I'm happy, hit that icon and it'll import there. I'll delete that tile. Another option is to go to custom table and upload a CSV file. Now, CSV, very similar to spreadsheet, which you're probably used to an Excel spreadsheet. You can save from Excel or Google Sheets or anything else you use. You can save as a CSV file. So if I select this table here, now, honestly, this came from a WNBA site with the recent games. So that's where all this information has come from. So I don't have to type it all out. As they're playing every other day, basically, you don't want to have to keep manually typing this out on every scout. You want to try and keep this, you know, as seamless as possible for you. So using it straight off the site, copy and paste into a spreadsheet, exporting it as a CSV, importing it like this, is just a lot quicker. To rename the header, games. And if I click here, you'll see the same tile formatting or referring to the header. Add videos the same way there or here. Move tile to another page, duplicate, hide the header, save or delete. Now, where this differs is you'll see I have a row at the bottom that's no use to me. I can click here, delete row. And as long as I've selected any of the cells in that row, that row will delete. If I want to add one below here, I can simply click on any of these cells in that row, add one below, add one above. I can add a column and I can delete a column the same way. I can hide or display the heading row or the top row. I can also make the first column a header or a standard design. Now, this option here allows me to go to a text format menu and toggle back and forth between the table format menu as well. You know, different font types, different font colors, you have those options here. You can remove anything by just clicking that eraser icon there. Now, when we save a tile, like you can on any of these, you can save tile. They'll be saved here in save tile. So I've set up a starting five example, and that's come through here. Again, all the options are the same because it's still a custom table, but you'll see that I can save this if there are regular starters before putting in the opponent's starters. That just saves me time every time I create a play. Hopefully this shows you how you can make the most out of the tiles to start using FastScout. We'll have another video coming up shortly with how to use personnel and plays. But if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to support at fastmodelsports.com and we'll be glad to help. Thank you.